Hi guys, welcome to my critical presentation for West Side Bowel System. West Side Bowel System is a brainchild of powerlifter and strength coach Louis Simpkins. West Side Bowel System is highly influenced by Soviet and Bulgarian weightlifting techniques and adapted into powerlifting. West Side Bowel system in Columbus, Ohio is the only gym in the world to have two power lifters with over 2,700 pounds total, five over 2,800 pounds and one who has the biggest total of all of 3,005 pounds. Dave Tate and Matt Weening as we almost know are the two well-respected names in the field of power lifting and are outspoken disciples of West Side Bowel System. West Side Bowel System incorporates four workouts per week, two maximum effort days, which comprises of lower body, squat, deadlift, and one upper body, which will be bench press, and two dynamic effort days with a similar selection of upper and lower body exercises. After the main lift on the maximum effort and dynamic effort days, accessory exercises are performed with more conventional loads. This is an example of how a max effort lower body day would look like. And this is an example of a dynamic effort day comprising of variable resistance using chains and bands to provide resistance. Well, max effort days or max effort lower body day would usually comprise of one main lift with large number of sets of 8 to 12 and very few reps, maybe from 1 to 3. Progressing from light to a very heavy weight comprising of 90 to 100% of 1RM for the last three to five sets. A typical dynamic effort day comprises of one main lift, which are trained with a large number of sets, again, nine to 12, and with very few reps, one to three, by utilizing 40 to 60% of one RM, in addition to 25 to 30% one RM load from accommodating resistance. Accommodating resistance involves increasing the resistance as the movement progresses towards completion by use of chains and anchored bands attached to the barbell. This is how a sample workout of West Side Bowel System looks like, ensuring a gap of 72 hours between two max effort days. What does the research tells us about variable resistance programs. There has been a plenty of research done on variable resistance training where elastic bands and chains are attached to both ends of the bubble to modify the kinem kinematics of the lift. This means that the athlete usually gets lazy at the last concentric portion of the lift, has to work harder to finish the lift, thus providing greater loading and training stimulus. In the paper studying the effects of variable and traditional weightlifting, sorry, weight training in elite rugby players, it was found that the mean velocity of variable resistance group was small at lighter loads, but very large at 75% and 85% of one RM compared to traditional group. The percentage in mean velocity in the percentage in mean velocity at 85% of 1 RM was 18% for variable resistance group and 10.76% in traditional resistance training group. Emphasizing the importance of using variable resisting resistance as an effective strategy in improving bench press performance. Let's have a look at some of the EMG studies. 
well, S. S. Camila and Andrews, 2009, studied maximum voluntary isometric contraction of pectorals in different sports. And it was the highest during the tennis serve at 115%. Though, looking at the earlier paper, suggesting that traditional resistance training group produced absolute mean power of 411 watts, West side bubble system can be an effective strategy which considers both variable resistance, which involves moving the bar as fast as possible, and traditional resist resistance loading strategies, which can be more force dominant and can be an effective way to train at higher velocities and different forces. Also, a meta analysis studying the effect of variable resistance on maximum strength suggests an increase in performance represented by the arrow on different movements like the back squat, bench press, leg press, again suggesting the use of variable resistance like the west side vowel system in our programs. Let's look at the biomechanical comparison of traditional squat powerlifting squat, and box squat. When we talk about different squatting strategies, it's important to look at its longevity and from an injury prevention perspective. Some of the most common injuries seen in an athlete is of the lower back and ankles. Now, the moment forces on the back, L5, S1, and ankle for the box squat at 70% of 1RM is the least at 279 Newton meter and 71 Newton meter compared to traditional and powerlifting squat, suggesting that box squat could be an effective way to train the lower body. Hence, the inclusion of box squat is more in the west side bowel system, which might prove effective. West side bowel system mostly works on higher intensities of more than 85% and more for their main lifts. From the point of view of an athlete who's also practicing skills on field or on court, always working at these in intensities can be of great challenge. Hence, the system is more biased towards power lifting. Working on intensities of 100% or 110% of 1RM can create great amount of nervous system fatigue or what we also call as nervous system breakdown, which will take a longer time to recover for an athlete, especially who's playing a sport and also building up to these in intensities might injure the athlete. The use of sled, sled dragging during a restoration session might be an effective way for a power lifter to recover. But when we are training athletes, we've definitely got different modalities which can be used for the same. For example, focusing on light triples at 40 to 50% RM would not only help the athlete recover from the previous session, but will also help develop a strong technique for the lift. Now, because two max effort days are spread out between 72 hours, uh, this ensures that there's greater recovery between the two sessions, or as you say, between the two max effort days. Now, there will be different types of athletes which might recover faster or, for that matter, recover at different times. Hence, for lifter who recovers faster, squatting once a week might be disadvantageous. There are a variety of exercises in West Side Bowel System to select from, and hence, the lifter is always challenged and highly motivated. 
west side bubble system peaks throughout the year and hence this might not help aid in recovery there's lesser time for beginner athlete to build resilience as there's lesser lesser emphasis given for 50 to 75% of range of 1 rm different variety of exercises can help athlete to work around structural differences which might be an added advantage of the system now peaking at as we already discussed that peaking at 110 to 120% of the of of 1 rm can be disadvantages because of the fact that the athlete might take a longer time to recover and also it's a challenge to to sort of prescribe those loads especially at a time when an athlete is playing a sport because at some times the session on court or or on field would be higher and there are high likely chances that the session in the gym or the intensity in the gym has to come down and hence we cannot always train at 100 or 85% intensities now uh i would like to conclude that though west side bubble system is an effective and safe way of improving performance the timing at which the coach decides the intensity is of prime importance it's a great mix of power lifting and variable resistance that lets you train throughout the force velocity spectrum due to higher intensities the athlete might always need a supervised coach and guidance for the lift which might possess a greater challenge for athletes who are always traveling for tournaments thank you